Okay, here's David Snyder back again with um, Home Pro Studio. Lesson number three, we're talking about drums because that's almost always the thing that people struggle with the most in getting a realistic sounding song um, or great production, whether you're just doing a simple demo or whether you're intending to use your home studio to... Uh, produce a commercial cut or to actually produce an album, which you can as long as you have the right software, such as, again, uh, Finale, Garrison, Band in a Box, those type of things, and a good digital audio workstation. Well, in this lesson, we're focusing on uh, drums. As you'll see here, and I'm going to speak very slowly and work slowly, hope that people will pay attention I'm going to go over it very slowly to make sure that it all makes sense. Behind the mixing board on the Garrison Aria player, which is a plug-in VST, which is compatible with Finale and worth every single penny, if, as you can see behind this, I actually have um, a two drum tracks opened up in a um, Finale working template. So I have, I created um, a drum score. You can create drum score, say for example, you can create great drum tracks and band in a box. Finale will uh, generate some great uh, drum tracks. Most of the time you're going to want to edit and tweak your drum tracks yourself, but even if you generate a drum track on its own in band in a box or Finale or whatever program, you export it as a MIDI, you import it, for example, into Finale. You go here to this box where it says MIDI. And I've, you see how I've selected Play Through VST, which is the top. Okay. So once I do that, then I go to Instrument Setup. I go to VST Instruments. I'm choosing the ARIA player. The ARIA player comes with the Garrison program. It's what um, the uh, samples play through. I've already got the box open. I just you just click on the uh, the pencil and it it brings you here. And I can see my score now, which I call drum experiment, is going to play through the ARIA player. I have the other tracks muted. I have the drum tracks soloed. In many cases, I'll actually record two drum tracks to a song so I can mix and match later to give it a little bit more dynamic depth. Uh, sometimes I'll use a drum track in certain uh, sections. Sometimes I won't. Sometimes I'll have both drums going at the same time. But let me let you hear what a drum track sounds like when it's played through the Garrison Aria player using the Garrison live drum samples, okay? Okay, the amazing thing about this is these sound pretty darn close to real drums. And you can go into the effects setting and you can choose what we would call different mic settings. You, you can do this in one of two ways. I can either go into the controls, of course I'm going to have to select it, okay. So I've selected um, drum track number 10. You see it's got an e equalizer. Um, I can adjust the depth. I can adjust the gain. I can adjust high. I can even decide how much snare I want. I can decide how much cymbal I want. Okay, so in effect, this is just like miking the snare drum or miking the cymbal and deciding how close you want the mic to it. You go into effects. You can actually choose the ambiance that you want. Uh, you, you see if you change it to a concert hall, you're going to get a much different sound than if you chose, for example, Jazz Club One. Jazz Club One is a great uh, sound. The basic point being that once you have done all of this, you can get 
a pretty daggone good, real live sounding drum track that you can produce to. When you want to do something with it, you simply go up here to File, you hit um, Export to Audio File, and um, you give it um, a name and you save it as a WAV file, save, it's as simple as that. Okay, so we've just seen why you probably would want to think about investing in Finale and the Garreton uh, sample library. This particular uh, drum set comes from uh, the big band or the jazz band uh, sample set. I also use the Garreton Personal Orchestra, which um, they're both fantastic libraries. So the drums again come from um, the Garreton big band slash uh, jazz band sample set, which for me is pretty uh, essential uh, software. There's one thing that you want to know about it. I will go to um, when you export anything in Finale at this particular point or a Garreton, um, it exports it as um, a stereo file, which apparently is something that they're working on, but you know that if you want to import something into a digital audio workstation, you are going to want to um, have a mono WAV file. Therefore, and I've discussed this with um, the people at Finale, at, for the time being, and this is okay because I really like having the sound of live drums, you're going to have to use Audacity. So what I do is I open up Audacity. Once I'm in Audacity, I find the file. Here's the finale drum sounds. I open it. As you'll see, it um, opens as a stereo file, which for me, again, if you're a recording engineer or an artist and you have a digital audio workstation, you're going to want to put these drums in a mono file, not a stereo file. But that's fortunate because you just go tracks. In Audacity, you go to tracks up here at the top. Stereo track to mono. Uh, it's right under add new. Stereo track to mono. There you go. Bingo. So that is uh, the conclusion of lesson number three. How to create and use and manipulate um, drum sounds using Finale and the Garreton Jazz Band um, sample sounds. You can get a fantastic beginning foundation for your song using that. And subsequent lessons, we'll talk about how to compose, um, export, and tweak other sounds such as the piano and strings.